slave. Winterfell. <laughs> Can't wait to see Winterfell. It's so neat. We're here at Winterfell. This is where they filmed some of the scenes in Winterfell and Game of Thrones. It's so exciting to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, doing some boat projects. This is kind of a project I've wanted to do for a while, and uh, it's just a slightly annoying thing about our boat. Our boat wasn't originally built with um, like a furling head sail. So after the fact, we have a furler line that we've just kind of used and mounted up on this hole. When this gets mounted here, the line interferes with, with our, uh, our head sail sheet. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to tap and drill uh, some holes here so we can mount a small like bracket. The furling line could attach to so it'll be lower and have much more clearance. Now I'm tapping the hole and it's just so difficult. Like I don't want to break the tap in the hole so I'm being very cautious. Another little upgrade we're working on today is our blocks for our main sheet. They have this uh, shackle arrangement that's kind of a little weird for our boat. Um, I have these holes in the shackles that don't really quite like, go through the holes well. So uh, I had my first foray at making some Dyneema shackles, soft shackles. Maybe this would be much nicer, it would be a lot less uh, noise and there'll be more uh, movement or like freedom of movement for the block, which is healthier for the block. So yeah, uh, I'm excited. It's, it was really cool making these. So looking forward to seeing where I can put more little Dyneema uh, shackles and whatnot on the boat. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited. It's just fun. It's really satisfying to like make your own shackle like that from Dyneema. Uh, I mean, like, obviously you can't just make your own metal shackle without lots of tools, equipment, and knowledge, but for Dyneema, it's pretty rad to be able to rig stuff up like this, so we'll see how she works. Well, today it's time to do a sail change. We're gonna finally depart Belfast, and looking at the weather report, looks like we're gonna have a bit of a headwind. So not like too much, like 15 knots or so, but what we found is pretty much if we're going into the wind at all, our smaller head sail works so much better. It's both more efficient and we can get it like a tighter shape and it's easier to tack when we have to do lots of tacking. So I'm gonna take down the Big Jenny today and put up our smaller uh, UK sail makers. It's like 120% Genoa. Well, with some help from Panda, we got the Big Jenny down. So it's supposed to be sunny today. So I'm just gonna let it uh, sit out here on the bow, dry out as much as possible before we stuff it away in a locker. Um, but yeah, got our small Jenny up now. Now I just have to take this like uh, tack line, the Anima tack line that I made uh, and get it out of here, which is sometimes a little difficult and then kind of put on the new one, get our sheets led. And then our sheets, we, we, run them, <laughs> we run them a bit different. When we run our small head sail, we have two tracks. So we have a track that's a little bit forward here. And so I need to rig up a block here. This is kind of our aft track. So I'll take this block, move it forward. And then, uh, and then I take this turning block back here and I'll put it on here. And then that should be the setup. So now to rig up on our other head sail. So I put this little tack line right through the tack of the sail. And this one, I just double up like that so that the sail just goes over the rail here. Perfect. 
And then when I have the other Jenny, I just make this dynam Dyneema loop a full long length and it just works out perfect. Love when things work out like that. Tack line done, boom. And I got this little strap on here. Now I just need to raise the halyard all the way up, take up that slack. Okay, done. Well, to continue our pre-trip preparation, some of the things I do is one, is we refill the water. So I got a water line coming from the dock, just top up on our tank before we leave. Um, I also kind of like clean the cockpit with fresh water while I can. Um, we're also running the engine. I like to run it every couple days, uh, even when we're in the marina. I uh, put it in gear as well to get the transmission warm and the prop kind of cleaned off, empty trash use shower facilities tonight. We've done all the laundry we can do. So I think we're good there. Provisioning, we're all set. So yeah, uh, that's about it. And then we just have a few things to tidy up inside, but that won't take very long. We can do that after dinner tonight. And then tomorrow, early morning departure. So excited to get out of here. Good morning. Good morning. We're waking up early-ish for us to... <laughs> like 5 30 in the morning waking up to get motoring out of this harbor of uh belfast and we're heading to banger fill up on fuel and then keep heading on south goodbye belfast goodbye We are heading into Bangor Marina for some fuel. And it is a beautiful morning. The sun is just coming up over the city of Bangor here. It's like beautiful homes overlooking the bay. What do you think, Panda? Beautiful morning, man. I like this town. It's really pretty. It is. The colorful houses on the on the shoreline. Ah, that's a good sound bite. Now push off the bow and off on. Yeah. Four knots of current. We're doing almost nothing through the water, just going slow so we don't bash too much. Wow, look at these waves. the binoculars I was saying I see some really choppy stuff ahead and yeah I mean like I knew this was gonna happen I didn't think it would be that bad but I mean, it's fine it's just uncomfortable nothing was like unsafe for us so uh, but yeah so uh, got a good sea washing of the deck of the boat <laughs> that was quite the wild ride I mean 
the deck was completely awash when we were spearing through some of these stacks. It was crazy. Water was going everywhere. I got a little nervous, I guess. I'm like, uh, is this gonna be never ending or is this gonna, are we gonna level out soon? And we seem to be calming down a little bit more. We do still have the wind against current, so that's really making the difference here. motor sailing kind of up into the wind. We've rounded our mark. Now we're able to bear off a little bit. And yeah, we are going fast, like seven knots through the water and then 8.8 .8 over ground. We hit nine. We hit nine right now. I thought we had would have great wind to do a downwind sail with our spinnaker here, but as soon as I came out here to put it up, like the wind died to nothing. So, well, but we got to try out a new tack line setup that I did. Um, but the sails are complaining. I think it's time to take things down and uh, get motoring on in. And we're still left with the same sea state, sea state, <laughs> sea state that we had with all the wind that we had previously. So it's really lumpy out here, <laughs> and it's not easy to do bow work when it's this lumpy. But I'm excited about Darren's new tack line. That seemed to be a success. We just needed some more wind. Can't control that. Well, we made it to Strangford Lock. It's beautiful here. I'm so excited to explore. It's calm. There's a castle over there and there's a whole town. I didn't even expect that to be that uh, that big over there. But it, we got in uh, like an hour early actually, so it's four o'clock and it feels good to be still and I'm excited to just chill for the rest of the night. And we actually picked up a mooring ball, which I didn't expect either. Winterfell. <laughs> Darren. Can't wait to see Winterfell. It's so neat. I love that Darren's now really into Game of Thrones ever since we went to Belfast, where the filming of the last couple seasons were. And now we're like, what, are, what season are we on now? Uh, five. Five? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy. It feels good to watch it again because I see a lot more than I did before and I can keep track of all the family names. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's been really entertaining. I can see why everyone's like was so into it. That's old, old news now, but I'm enjoying it now, so. <laughs> It's always our dilemma. It's so hard to get ashore every time. Seriously. Walking around here is simply gorgeous. I don't haven't been able to experience the beautiful fall colors before, so it smells so natural and fresh. The rain had come a few times and the ground's all muddy and everything's fall. I'm just in love with all these fall colors. I didn't get a chance to see all this when I was in, living in Florida, so this is really beautiful to me. And it feels, I feel so lucky. We're here at Winterfell. This is where they film some of the scenes in Winterfell and Game of Thrones. It's so exciting to be here. It's actually called Castle Ward, but we know it as Winterfell. Go on, father's watching. <laughs> and which one of you was a marksman at 10? 
Keep practicing, Bran. And voila! We are actually looking at the set location from this memorable scene where Bran, John, and Rob practice their archery. Though honestly, it was hard to discern a lot of the shots as apparently additional structures were built within the castle grounds, including that terrace Ned was viewing from. The courtyard area was also used later though, when King Robert Baratheon arrived at Winterfell to give the not so good news to Ned about his new job as Hand of the King. I feel like I'm in a magical forest. I love walking around and discovering all these paths and new ways to get around here. <laughs> it's so cool, like we just walked a path that had another uh, another outshoot and we took that instead to try and get to the peninsula around the corner and then we're surprised with this gorgeous lush forest. And unexpectedly, meandering around the grounds, we came upon Audley's Castle. This structure has been very well preserved and it was built back in the 15th century for a private residence, probably a lord being lightly fortified and atop the beautiful hill overlooking Strangford Lock. Apparently quite a few of these were built over the Irish countryside, but little history is known. Turns out these grounds were also used for a few shots in Game of Thrones. Enjoy these behind the scenes and actual clips, which were filmed right here on location. A naked man has few secrets. A flayed man, none. The rot set in. No, don't! No, don't! For those who have seen Game of Thrones, I hope you enjoyed seeing these little clips, maybe like a trip down memory lane. And for those who haven't, I highly recommend watching the series. Though if you haven't by now, my recommendation probably isn't going to persuade you. Now, let's enjoy watching this cute lady dance her way across Audley's castle. Thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing if you enjoy our content. And if you want to support us further, find us on Patreon. There's cream here. <laughs> but it tastes, I decided to lick it. It tastes like garlic. No, 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 no drama. Uh, actually, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Ow, it's spiky. I can't get this one out. Ow, it's spiky. I still don't see any birds. What month is this? November? I know your dirty ass wants some water. I didn't mean to press the button again. Darren, in the wild, checking his phone. I'll do a retake.